the capacity to lead. When the chips were down, you could not count on John Kerry. John Kerry is no war hero. He betrayed all his shipmates. He lied before the Senate. And John Kerry betrayed the men and women he served with in Vietnam. He dishonored his country. He most certainly did. I served with John Kerry. John Kerry cannot be trusted. Swift Boat Veterans for Truth is responsible for the content of this advertisement. That ad was released in conjunction with the publication of John O'Neill's book, Unfit for Command. More than 30 years ago, John O'Neill and John Kerry appeared together on The Dick Cavett Show. The Dick Cavett Show! Tonight, Dick's guests are John Kerry from Vietnam Veterans Against the War. <laughs> this is John O'Neill, this is John Kerry, and um, I, I even think that we both asked you which profiles you favor. They're equally. See, uh, we will actually start because it was requested that we do this. This may seem ludicrous with the flip of a coin, because uh, this is not going to follow the actual uh, outlines of a debate, but I thought it might be well for each of you fellows to start out with some statement of what your organization wants and uh, is, if you'd like to do that. Um, you want to call it in the air? Yes. <laughs> All right, it's an absolute, it's a U.S. quarter, 1966. <laughs> okay. You got it. I'll speak first, if that's okay. okay. Hopefully last, too. <laughs> Come here today to speak for peace, a just and lasting peace in Southeast Asia. There is no one in this country who likes war, least of all those of us who fought in the Vietnam War. And it is in the spirit of ending that war in a rational manner that I would like to speak today. I think any rational man can see that the Vietnamization program of the President has done more to end this war than all the demonstrations and hate of the last 10 years in this country. When Mr. Kerry and I were in Vietnam, there were 550,000 U.S. troops there. When Mr. Kerry marched down in April with his 900 embittered men to Washington, there were 284,000 troops there. When our own organization was formed in May, there were 245,000 troops there. Today, there are 215,000, and by the time you see this show tonight, there will be 700 less. When we were in Vietnam, there were 87,000 Marines in I Corps. Today, there are 900 in all of South Vietnam, and South Vietnam and I Corps remain free. The unit we both served in in Vietnam, Coastal Division 11, the first naval combat unit in Vietnam, was one of the last naval combat units out of Vietnam last December. And the South Vietnamese who replaced us there are doing a fine job. They have won victories and they've suffered defeats. As any, army, as any army does. But the main story has been that the strength of the North Vietnamese in I Corps and other areas of that country, including the Mekong Delta, where we both serve, has been broken. I think there are three things that we can all agree on. First, we all want to see a speedy end to American involvement in Vietnam. Second, we all realize that if we come home from Vietnam, leaving our POWs in rotting in North Vietnamese jails, that we will leave the heart and soul of this country there also. Finally, we all want to see the South Vietnamese have the type of government that they themselves freely choose. I suggest that it's time for an end to hate and disruption in this country. I suggest it's time for trust in this country, the same kind of trust that we will need when the war in Vietnam is over to live with ourselves here. I'd like to turn to a second issue. Mr. Kerry is the type of person who lives and survives only on the war weariness and fears of the American people. This is the same little man who on nationwide television in April spoke of, quote, crimes committed on a day-to-day -day basis with the full awareness of officers at all levels of command, who was quoted in a prominent news magazine in May as saying, quote, war crimes in Vietnam are the rule and not the exception, unquote, who brought 50 veterans down to Washington to testify about alleged atrocities in April, the same 50 who, after they had appeared on every major news network, refused to provide any depositions or provide any details of any kind. Never in the course of human events have so many been libeled by so few. There were two and a half million of us who served there in Vietnam. Under the most severe restrictions in this nation's history, we have brought this war close to a close. 
We never engaged in mass bombing of population centers, as all nations did in World War II. And the reason we did not is because we are a moral people. 55,000 Americans died there in Vietnam, no matter what they thought about the war, because they believed in this country. And those of us who survived came back to this country, by and large determined just to resume our normal lives after the disruption caused by war. We encountered a variety of problems, unemployment, discrimination, other problems. And then we encountered the biggest problem of them all, the big lie by Mr. Kerry and his group, that we were either each individually war criminals or that we were collectively the executioners of a criminal policy. You've seen that all before. It's guilt by association. If one or 50 or 150 veterans testify as to war crimes, then all two and a half million of us must be war criminals. That's the same as saying if one Jew or one black commits one murder in this country, then all the Jews and all the blacks in this country must be murderers, and that is something that we must not stand for in this country. We've all heard of Lieutenant Kelly. He's accused of the murder of 102 civilians at Song Me Lai, and the operation and the law will operate in his case. This man has attempted the murder of the reputations of two and a half million of us, including the 55,000 dead in Vietnam, and he will never be brought to justice. We can only seek justice and equity from the American people. Every man kills the thing he loves. By each let this be told. The brave man does it with a sword, the coward with a word. Thank you. Mr. Kerry, I expect we, you have something to say to that. We have a message, however, from <laughs> Calgon. Here is now how a bath can smooth and soften your skin, leave you radiant and refreshed with Calgon bath oil beads. Uh, before that break, uh, and I must uh, apologize for the fact that we do have to keep stopping. Uh, it's commercial medium, and um, sometimes those things aren't going to mesh very well. Uh, now, uh, John Kerry. Wow. <laughs> uh... Well, there's so many things really to be said, and it's hard to find a place to start after a uh, barrage like that. I think, uh, first of all, I'm somewhat surprised at the attitude of uh, somebody who wore the same uniform as I did, who served in the same military for the same kind, I hope, uh, patriotic reasons. And I really haven't come back to this country, nor have uh, Vietnam veterans uh, against the war come back to this country to try in any sense or in any form to show bitterness or to tear the country apart or to tear it down. I think that, that what we're doing is we're trying in a sense to, to show where the country went wrong and we believe that as veterans who took part in this war we have nothing to gain by coming back here and talking about those things that have happened except to try and point the way to America to try and say here is where we went wrong and we've got to change and I think that the attitude of uh, the Vietnam veterans for a, for a just peace is really one sort of of my country, uh, right or wrong, which is really on the intellectual level, I think, of saying my mother, drunk or sober. And, and I think that, that just as when your mother is drunk, you take her and dry her out, God forbid that she is, you, you take your country, in the words of uh, Senator Carl Schurz, who said, my country, right or wrong, uh, when right, keep it right. When wrong, put it right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we veterans are trying to do. On the question of Vietnamization, uh, this is something which people can argue about for hours and hours. Uh, we've just heard it mentioned that it's succeeding, that the Marines have been withdrawn from the North. Well, just the other day, Firebase Fuller was overrun, and it took the United States uh, to fly supplies in to take care of it. Uh, we hear that the Delta is pacified. Well, uh, a few weeks ago, the report came out that 54 naval bases and other bases, all the bases in the Delta, had been overrun in the first three months of 1971, and that the reason they were overrun was because in 22 cases, sentries were asleep. In 22 cases, uh, there were quislings, people who gave up. Uh, you can contest this question of Vietnamization right down the line. The question really is this. Is the United States of America determined to leave Vietnam? And if we are determined to leave Vietnam, which I believe the president has shown some indications of, because he has withdrawn troops, we don't deny that. What we say is the troops can be withdrawn faster. What we say is the killing can stop tomorrow. 
and it can stop if the president of the united states will set a date certain